All right, everybody, welcome to Connecting with Jennifer Phils, and we have a brand new guest. In fact, she's so brand new, we just met, and I don't want to butcher her name. Could we please have you reveal your beautiful name? Mona Andre. I thought so. Okay, good, because I wanted to say Mona Andre, but it's you, you say it Andre. Got it. Well, I do, yes. Some members of my family say Andre. Like, it, it, it depends who you're talking to. I don't know. You would think we were related. Right, 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 and and yes, the same thing goes with my last name. It's German. If we sound, if we pronounce it properly, it's Filzen. But I learned long time ago to drop the T sound and the Z, like pizza, because people always want to throw a T into my name. It's like, no, no, it's hard enough to spell. Let's make it phonetically easy. Right, <laughs> Filzen. <laughs> Fill it with Zen. <laughs> All right. I'm all for that. I love it. So we were introduced by S. Renee, and yeah. I hope to interview S. Renee at a later time, but we were introduced by her, and she sent you my way because you are a writer. I am a writer. There's so much we can go into this just on that topic alone. But um, I, I'm just going to start off with the basic question of what makes you special and unique, and we're going to learn a whole lot about you just, just from that. So, okay. Mona, what makes you special and unique? That's such a hard question, and it reminds, it makes me think of the, I think it was a Ziggy cartoon that I saw years ago that said something like, I'm not perfect, and I'm the perfect example of that. Do you remember that? Yes, I loved Ziggy. Ziggy was awesome. So, um, I've been described as quirky. Uh, I'm not going to deny that. I look at things differently, and I think that comes across as in my writing, too. So I don't, yeah, I don't know how to, I really don't know how to answer that question. Oh, it's fine. You know what? This is the cool thing. I love open-ended questions because it can go down so many different paths and there are no wrong answers. So yeah. let me ask you this. Did you always know that you were going to be a writer or was this something that came later in life? No, I've always written. I have what I call head books, what other people call journals. I have, I have them all since forever. Um, I think I knew that I could make it a career when my math teacher called my mother to tell her that I was failing math and, and, and this teacher actually was a very, um, like a she was a nun and she was very strict and very, she could look at you with her hairy eyeballs and everybody would be silent. And my mother actually said to her, Mona's not failing math because she's dumb. She's failing math because she's a writer. And I was walking through the kitchen when she said that, and I was like, oh, I guess I'm a writer. <laughs> I love it, your mom saw your genius first. Or my attempts, my attempts back then. Oh, that's so cool. Well, the cool thing too, though, I mean, I also am not a math genius. There are certain maths that I gravitated to because they were visual, statistics, otherwise known as sadistics. Um, statistics was always a math that I was attracted to because Venn diagrams and bell curves, it's extremely visual with all those graphs. Okay. And so that was the one that I was like, woof, this is my math. So you've but, already lost me. But when it came to like trigonometry and algebra and, ugh, no, thank you. <laughs> yeah, so it's, it's, I think it's a part of the brain. Like there's languages and there's, writing and there's learning languages and there's linguistics and there's numbers and so it's different parts of our brain that are more developed than others yeah and that's okay because there's there's room for all of us right yeah absolutely. i love it so so one of your fortes is being a, a humorist within your writing tell me about that journey how did you okay tell me about okay you, you were tell you were labeled by mom wonderfully so that you're a writer what was your journey in that? Did you did you start off with like certain genre, like, and then did you get into corporate stuff, and then figured out? Eh. I mean, like, what was what was your path? So, so I've always written. So, like I said, my head books. That's how I figured how how to get through things or how my thought process, I guess. Um, and I've always written stories and poems but that was never really where I went and then one time I was reading Writer's Digest and I saw or I read an article about 
copywriting. So I thought, oh, I can do that. I can write ads. I can. So I studied the heck out of that. And so I became a copywriter. But at the same time, I was writing articles for magazines. So I kind of did it in parallel. And then I started a blog, I think in 20, 2010, I'm going to say, but I'm not sure. Um, just to, because I thought, oh, I have, I don't have an editor. There's no, you know, guidelines here. I can, I can write about whatever I want to here. So that's where I, how I started with that, with humor writing, because it just was whatever I felt like writing about. I love it. And then you have a new book that's coming out. Yes. yes tell I me do. about that and tell me what it's about and your journey in, in exploring that. So, okay. So actually. I have an advanced reader copy here. Ooh, hey, Superwoman. So it's it's a Superwoman, a funny and reflective look at single motherhood. So basically, I'm a single mom. I've always been a single mom, and it's been a journey. And so what I and when I was a young single mother, I felt very alone. I felt that back then we didn't have the internet, right? I mean, not you know, last year ish, not not so much, but almost. And so my, my, I guess with the book, I really wanted to reach out to other single mothers to let them know that they are not alone. One, they're not alone, because there's a lot of us out there. And two, it's damn hard, and it's okay that it's hard. And three, don't forget who you are. So that's my message throughout the book, is like, you, you're a mom, yes, and that's really important, but you're also an individual, you have your own dreams, your own goals, your own, your own aspirations. That's you need to keep on to that because that's really your purpose, right? Whatever drives you is your purpose. And if you don't have a purpose, you don't have anything. So true. We all have our calling and yes. we haven't lived our best life until we pursue that calling. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And yeah. a lot of women that I know that were mothers, whether they were single mothers or, or married throughout the, the child's life and then grew up. I, my own mother. So my parents were married for 52 years. And when I graduated from high school and went off to college, that's when my mother hit her renaissance period and she started writing. She's the author of five novels. Oh, awesome. Very cool. Yeah. So I, I always remember she was 48 when she like started hitting her stride. And it was, it was cool watching her go through that evolution of, of like coming into fruition with her true power. Right. Right. So it was her time, and so now she was at the point where she was listening to herself. I believe that if we, if something drives us or lights us up, whether it's working with numbers, as maybe not for you and I, or painting, or or writing, or serving others, helping others, and it's always about serving other people, right? So whatever lights us, if we can combine that with helping others, that's our purpose. That is our purpose in life. That's how you find out what it is. And we all have a purpose. We all do. So what is your purpose? I think my purpose is when, well, with this book, it's to remind other, and not just single mothers. Actually, I've had um, mothers and like just mothers say that, oh my God, I resonate with this book. So I think it's just to remind people of who they are and to also through my writing, because I really love engaging with readers, I think that it's about reminding people to live their authentic life, to live from inside themselves. Mm -hmm. So uh, your book just sounds so amazing, and I, I wish I could tell everybody that I've already read it. I've read, I've read press releases on it. I've stalked you on Facebook. I have, I, I see that it, it talks about the man that you had your child with and then he left and how uncomfortable it must be that now he's like, uh Oh, she's written about me. Yes. Tell me about that. I mean, okay. Yes. So my oldest daughter, her father or the, his daughter, whatever she, she told. So, okay. So how the story goes is that I actually realized that he was not good for us, meaning me and, and my two daughters at the time. So I, kicked him out, whatever, and he left, he left the country, or he left the province to live on the other side of the country, and he left his kids and was never responsible. So now he finds out that I wrote this book. So he reached out to our daughter to say, like, basically, oh, shit. 
Sorry. <laughs> So no, it's I fine. Her. We cut here. It's okay. It's all good. <laughs> the book is not about him. The book is it's not a man bashing book at all. And I I wanted her to tell him that I I would never call him out. I'm not a mean person, right? It's not about saying oh you you know you didn't do this and you didn't do this and you weren't there for that. It was it's not about that. It's more for the mothers. Here's it's what not, happens if yes, and and you know you're you have everything on your shoulders and yay you, you are a superwoman. Right. But you're right though. I think we've all made a mistake and go and look back at it going just as he did. Oh shit. <laughs> right. <laughs> How do I make amends for this? Cause you're right. Like when I, when I was going through a divorce, that was when I started doing my music, which is why I'm rock star marketing. I started doing, my music for the first time that I've always wanted to do it. I always wanted to be a rock star and I ended up using my uh, singer songwriter oh, and I play the drums. Yeah. Oh, I'm, I'm not really good at playing the drums, but I enjoy the hell out of it. And you can't be stressed out after playing the drums because you've just worked out all of that stress. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I remembered um, my first album. It was about my divorce, but not a single song was about my ex-husband. It was about right. what I was going through. And so I remembered him saying, oh, I think I know what your songs are about. And I'm like, <laughs> sure, <laughs> sure, okay. I, I, didn't, I didn't say one way or the other that none of these songs are about you, but that's okay. I, it was, it was, we're, we're going through our own stuff. It really yeah. isn't highlighting the other people we're the ones going through the journey that's we're right. the ones documenting that yeah that's right and not only that but by by documenting it through our art so for you it's songwriting we're helping other people right how, how often do you listen to a song on the radio and you just it just resonates with you all the time yeah all the time yeah yeah we, need, we do yeah i mean think about it what are the different things that people are talking about in songs I'm horny and I want to get laid or my heart is broken and I want to cry. And then some other random thing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> those that has to, but, but those are the two main things that people, I'm happy and horny or <laughs> I'm really heartbroken. And then there's other stuff like, you know, political stuff and, and current times and, you know, funny you little stuff. There? There? They're all H words. Happy, horny, heartbroken. I didn't realize that. <laughs> and and here's the other funny thing. We have so much in common because I'm a writer as well. Singer, songwriter. Take that. Apply that skill to blogging, to SEO content for websites. So, yeah, it, here at Rockstar Marketing, we are master storytellers. You just blend the story that plucks at the heartstrings and combine it with the keywords that are necessary for SEO for pur purposes. Yep. Yeah. And social media and you take that that voice and you but it's it's fascinating, isn't it? The whole storytelling genre, whether it's movies, songs, novels, comedy, stand up routines, it doesn't matter. It, we are all connected through story. Exactly. It's in us. I mean, it goes back thousands of years ago on the yeah. walls of, of caves. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So I'm kind of curious. <clears throat> We're going through this pandemic. We're approaching our first anniversary of like yeah. being in this whole thing. And I am sad because I'm seeing women leaving the workplace in droves. So many jobs are losing women because women are falling back into the traditional roles of mother homemaker, taking care of everything because the kids are at home. There's a lot of stuff going on in the home and it's just very difficult. Now I say this, I'm not a mother. So I am reporting based off of what I've read and the people I'm talking to that are moms. So the, 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 the little joke for me is I taught seventh grade. It was the best form of birth control ever. I still don't want children as a result. I like kids, just other people's kids, and I yeah. really prefer teenagers and up. So, like, I'll teach them how to drive stick. I'll teach them how to play the drums. But if they're slobbering and they need their diapers changed, 
please don't hand them to me. I have no idea what to do with that. <laughs> I hear you. I do. I hear you. I've been, I've been through it. I mean, I never thought I would say things like stop wiping your nose on my jeans. I never thought I would <laughs> say that, but I've said it. But you know what? To your point, though, I'll say this. I'm noticing that fathers today, younger fathers, are more involved than they were. Bravo. Earlier. They are doing a great job, young fathers. Yes, they yeah. are. Yeah. So it's not just the role of. Correct. And and women, too, are more assertive. It's it's like, yeah, so I'm at home, but guess what? I'm going jogging, and oh, here, you know. Oh, I, and you need to change the diaper. Yeah. Yeah, good. And I'm glad to hear that because you're, you're seeing that perspective. But I'm, I'm just concerned that, like, you know, the women that are wanting to do what you're saying in your book and following their purpose, I'm concerned that there's going to be a generation of women that go from being, hey, this is what I'm all meant to be and this is what I'm going to do to dampening that light, putting it behind a, a lampshade, if you will, dimming that but we light. Have, we have technology now, though, too, right? So people could work from home. People are working from home. There's more entrepreneurs now than there's ever been. And it's all done on online, basically. So I don't think we're ever going to go back back. I think that people are recognizing themselves and rec and realizing that they can do a work life balance or a, you know just a life life balance. They can incorporate everything. So I th I don't think we'll go back to like the fifties. Well, that's good to hear. That's good to hear because that is a concern. Yeah, we're definitely going back to like the eighties when drive ins and. 70s and 80s where the drive-in theaters were the thing and cruising in your car was the thing. There's a lot of that going on. <laughs> there is a lot of that. And it's actually our sanity, right? Just leave the house with our masks and listen to tunes in our car while we drive to the grocery store. Right. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So tell me, Mona, who is it that you serve in your life? I'm going to say... Um, I'm not going to say everybody, but anybody. Like I have, I have people that reach out to me that are aspiring writers. I have people that reach out to me that are mothers pulling out their hair. Um, so anybody, I'm always will. I mean, I'm not uh, Mother Teresa in any on any side of you know the that. But anybody that needs help or guidance. I'm so there for them. I'm there. I'm there for motivation. I'm there for inspiration. Nice. Do you have a team of writers that work for you or with you as you're doing some of your projects, or is it you? You're a solopreneur. Yep. Wow. So what happens if you can't write? What happens to your spirit? If I can't write, like writer's block type thing, I read. Ah. If I get if I get that, if I'm, you know, stuck on or I just get up and go get a glass of water. Like, you know, sometimes you're writing and it's like a, mm, just get up and then you come back and you're like, oh. Right. The needle gets unstuck. Amen. Right? You just need a little break. Sometimes I'll take a walk. Yep. yep. Yeah. Or exercise or dance, you're a dancer, I'm a dancer. Yep. Just movement. Oh, that's right. We have that in common. So tell me about your dancing. And are you able to dance where you are? Is your area locked down? No. Or? So we're so we're we can't get together as a team, but we do still practice through Zoom. And it's not the same because you know how it is with the choreo, right? You're every everybody's on time and in sync. So, but at least we're still we're perfecting our moves, I guess, and our choreos on Zoom. Good so it's you. And what style of dance? Remind me what style of dance you're doing. Hip hop. Hip -hop. Oh, that's so much fun. I was oh, I so I, I was so bad at hip hop. I tried it and I just I I, I work so hard on being smooth. All the popping and all the, the yeah, well the popping pop is a different style altogether. But there is a little bit of that. It's just uh, I don't know. It makes me feel even at my age cool. <laughs> nice. Nice. Yes, yeah, so I'm a little delusional as well. Hey, you know what? That is awesome. There was a gal in Pacific Grove, not far from me, maybe like two miles away. And uh, years ago, it was at the ballroom that my husband and I met at 
because we were te we were taking West Coast swing classes, but there were all kinds of uh, classes in the studio, right. including a hip hop class. And she is, I can't remember her age when she was doing it, but anyway, she uh, she made a viral video and she was on the Ellen DeGeneres show. Oh, because, awesome. Because of her hip hop routine and her advanced age. And she, of course, it, you talk to anybody nowadays, that's really not an advanced age, but just at the time, you know, yeah, a, a fact that sure. an older, an older woman with gray hair would be hip hopping. It's like, oh, oh, oh. But now it's like, yeah, whatevs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is so fun yeah good for you yeah over the weekend um there was a virtual dance convention and it was uh it was really well done it was online classes online discussions about the dance about the community um it was just and, and a lot and there were even online dance parties so dj music and and all of us dancing in there and it was a hoot and i uh, i i had this missing of all my community but yet i felt good because i could see them absolutely even they weren't in the same room yeah we yeah. do paddling i'm not i'm not there i guess you could say but last uh december my school did a a, a virtual battle and it was so well produced, so well done. A lot of time, effort went into it to wow. organize it. And yeah, it was awesome. It was really okay. Well done. How do you do an online dance battle? Tell me, tell me. So they had their the judges. Some were in like in the school, and some were at home. And everybody just you know, it's your turn. Go on, do so from their living rooms, from their basements. Everybody battled, and then the judges would judge and give their critique and say, "Wow, you really aced it!" And it was it was well done. It was well done. Oh my gosh, that is so cool. It's a different world, right? We're learning how to do everything. I mean, I've been on Zoom meetings with clients where they're holding their baby. And right. now, before we were all about, oh, you have to be professional. But now it's like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> you have a life. You have a life. Well, you know what's kind of funny is that, yeah, like um, Saturday Night Live, and and the Food Network. Like there's different different channels and shows and different things where you got that glimpse into their houses. Yeah. And quite frankly, I felt comforted. Like, oh, I'm not the only one that has. A bookcase behind me like that's almost right. like standard <laughs> right? exactly exactly it's, I mean I've had I've had meetings with CEOs of big brand companies and they're wearing hoodies and sweatshirts and no bra and it's like anything goes now because we are human now we're being more recognized for what we can add as in terms of value as opposed to oh you know my mascara is on and i've got foundation or whatever yes well although although you mentioned that but don't be fooled there is a zoom boom in the med spa skincare clinic world where a lot of people are getting work done or investing in skincare and cosmetics because they do want to present well oh really okay so mm. I, don't, I don't belong to that world although i probably yeah. should well, it's it's kind of funny. I'm kind of torn because I don't wear makeup. I am just not a makeup girl. But when I was releasing my book and I did a photo shoot, of course, I did a photo shoot with makeup on. I had a girlfriend who's much more skilled at doing my makeup. In fact, she did my wedding makeup. So I had her do my photo shoot makeup. So you can I can count on like, you know, one hand how often I've worn makeup in the last decade. <laughs> right <laughs> but you know there before covid i was in classes with my with my various business coaches and speaking coaches saying okay well you need to wear a bright color when you are presenting that way you don't fall into the background because right. like it was told to me when you're in normal life we all at least not all but like a lot of us tend to wear black because it's very slimming but that's when you can see the entire figure Right. When you're on a Zoom call and you're wearing black, you tend to fade into the background. So when you are the speaker, you want to wear something brighter. Right. Which is why you know women are investing in the brighter shade of lipstick or what have you. But but for me, I'm kind of like, well, you know what? Having my own show such as this, I can do whatever the heck I want. 
That's right. And I, That's I can right. fly my freak flag and I can be my authentic self and and <laughs> and the hair is not necessarily done, but it's presentable. It's clean and you know, no makeup, but hey, it's us, right? That's right. And that exactly. authenticity has to mean for something, right? Yes. That is so cool. Agreed. I love 100%. it. I love it. So Okay, so writing is just such a topic that I can talk to you about for hours, but I don't want to get too deep in the woods because we might bore whomever is watching. But if someone is wanting to be a writer, if they are inclined to do that, what advice do you have for them? Two things. Write a lot, read a lot. And also, so two, so I'm going to say three things. So. Every first draft sucks. Yes, yes, so people, true. They'll read, you know, I don't know, Stephen King, yeah. I'll just throw his name out there, and they'll be like, oh, it, it's just so smooth, and the plot and everything. It's like it didn't start off like that. Draft one is always crap. Mm -hmm. Good point. Very rarely does it just come out, you know. Yeah. I have, a, I have a great story that is actually on this bookshelf the red see the big red one yeah it's just to the left of that yeah it was my master's thesis oh nice in history it was as i read it now i'm i'm mortified at how awful it is <laughs> it's just what's it on awful uh female teachers in the San Francisco Bay Area from just after the gold rush started to just before the 1900s. So it's the second half of the 1800s. And I got the diaries of three teachers and their, their, their diaries were fascinating. What they were doing as they were migrating, you know, em emigrating to California on a boat, you know, and going up to gold country and dealing with that. Or, um, you know, uh, going to Stanford University before, when it was co-ed, when it was a brand new university in 1871, and being a very independent woman who didn't know how to cook and, like, was going to have a career for herself, and then, you know, different things would change because, you know, women's minds are too feeble for education. Uh -huh. So yeah. that was a generation that went backwards, right? Um to uh, to a gal who was teaching in San Jose, California, who was riding the electric train around town because that was what happened before cars. So just fascinating, wow. fascinating things. Because, you know, electric cars are now the thing, right? But there was always electric. It's just, it was a different, anyway, it was just fascinating looking in the lives. But I look at this, the transitions and sentence structure and, and my con my contribution to trying to write about their three stories, and I'm like, oh god, oh god, and and even now we'll be writing content for websites, telling the stories of our clients, and you know they never read like the great American novel, our our commercial writing because it's not designed. No, to read. online writing is different than print writing. Very much so, because there are two audiences. There's the, the human eyeballs that we're trying to connect with the heart, and then there's the Google search bots. Yes, that and also thinking. there's the the information seekers and the scanners. They just want to give me bullet points and two sentence paragraphs. Like our attention span is, we're basically goldfish. Yeah, yeah, squirrel. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Yes, you're absolutely right. So it's true. It's like there's so many different writers and, and there's the poets and the, the ones that actually craft with, you know, all the rules. And then there are those that write songs and don't really care about the rules, but right. they'll just they'll just vomit whatever on the paper just to get it out. And then we clean it up later. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Here's my here's my emotions and bleeding heart. Please fix it. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, let me just get it out and then write a song about it and voila, you know, whether you like it or not, I don't care. It's my it's my stuff. Wow. So now, but for single moms though, that's a little different subset. There are a lot of single moms out there. There are a lot of you know what to be fair, there's a lot of moms and there's a lot of single parents, right? Just single single parents. What advice do you have for them? I'm gonna go back to my book. You're not alone. You are not alone. And I know how it feels sometimes, you know, at the end of the day, you, your day is done. The, 
typical day is done, but you've still got homework to go through and laundry and dinner and clean up and matching socks and whatever. You are not alone. It's hard. You're allowed to use your inside voice, you know, at a higher tempo. And don't forget who you are. If if singing is your thing, keep on to it. Like, hold it. You have to hold on to something that gives you pleasure. It can't just be about taking care of little mini-me's. Although, that's an important job. Like, I don't want to diminish that. I know that. I've been through it. How old are your kids now? <gasps> I know this. 35. 33, 24, and 21. Oh, every, time they, every time they have a new birthday, it messes me up. <laughs> and I have to go like. You have to like, you have to yeah. ratchet it. Wow, good point. Do you ever convert, can, uh, confuse their names, like start calling one the other? That's, yeah. Only when I'm mad at them. Yeah, yeah, they are. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so they're all, they're all adults now. Yeah, an adult, yeah. The 20, 21 year old able to vote and the whole deal and, and, yeah, and drink and the whole deal. Yeah. yeah. So, so now that they're of that age, does that give you a little bit more freedom or are some of them still living with you and helping? Oh out? my God. It gives me so much more freedom. So my son is the only one left at home. Uh, he's my second oldest or sec, sec, sorry, second youngest. And I, yeah, he does his own laundry. Nice. And I just make, try to make, you know, dinner. And yeah. Whatever's and but yeah, so much freedom. It's such a it's a different life. It's a different life. And but I'll say this too, when they're young, you like I remember when my two youngest, they're a year less, thirteen days apart. So they were like two and three and three and four, and I couldn't wait for them to be that much old. Oh, can't wait till they can make their own breakfast. I can't wait till they can you know. Now I wish I could go back and appreciate those days more. You know what I mean? Like I was so eager on independence and wanting them to be independent. And now I miss little Jonathan and Samantha. Listen, mm. I miss my little kids. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I, still, but I still see them. Like I still see that in them when they call me or when they come talk to me, I still see. So they're, you know, adults and whatever, but I still get to see the little glimpse of, I, I know you, I know you. Oh, that's so sweet. Do they have children? Uh, one does. One does. One oh, fantastic. Two. So now that you've got this grandchild, what is that like for you? Um, it's different. It's kind of like, yay. Okay, I'm leaving. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Right? I think that's a universal feeling amongst grandparents. They're like, yeah. woohoo, someone to spoil. Bye bye now. Yeah. Bye bye. Here you yeah. go. Here's, yeah. Here's the sugar. Go ahead and care for it. Stay exactly. Down. Exactly. By the way, in that child of yours, there's 20 pounds of chocolate. <laughs> this guy, Mark. Oh my gosh. Okay, Mona, tell us how we are going to be able to find you and find your book and learn more about you, please. So I have I have two websites. I have a my humor blog, the one that's listed as a top humor blog, whatever, is moxiedude.com. So it's M-O-X-I-E hyphen dude, D-U-D-E dot com. And then I have my author speaker website, which is my name, monaandre.com. And um, from there, you can find me pretty much everywhere. Oh, fantastic. And remind, remind, remind us the name of the book. It's called Superwoman? Superwoman, a funny and reflective look at single motherhood. And I'm not being, I'm just trying to simplify things. So no, much. no, no, no. We love that. Please, please. A funny and reflective look at single motherhood. It's One on day. Amazon. Okay, good. I was going to ask. And it says advanced reader edition. What oh, yeah. That? Because I, yeah, this is the one from my publisher that went out to all the book reviewers. Oh, so, I see. Uh, I see. This and it, yeah. Oh, so that's like the, hey, here's the preview. Um, yeah. Not, not yeah. for sale. You're special. You're special. So, yeah, tell me about, okay, tell me what it's like to promote a book with a publisher and all that stuff. Because I've always done self-publishing and I've done my own promotion and stuff. 
sounds like you are really um, on it. So tell me about that journey, if you don't mind. It still depends a lot on you because, well, even before you get a book out there, people are, are connecting with you as a person, right? You're connecting with your readers because you're on, on, you understand each other. So it's still a lot on the writer, even if you're with a publisher, um, although the publisher is very good at doing what they do. So, and I would never want to let go of that. Like, I still want to, I love it when, when I get a note from a reader saying, oh my God, and they quote me on something, you know, like a writer, uh, no, mothers, mothers have a special relationship with tired. I get that. And it's like, oh, I'm so happy. Like if I could, if I resonated with one person and made you realize something or made, just made you realize that you're not all by yourself in all this, like that, that makes my day truly it that does so cool. make my day. that is so cool. about. you're amazing you're amazing thank you so very very much for joining us everybody i hope you had a really great time getting to know mona isn't she fun and i hope that you will pick up her book superwoman and it's available on amazon it'll be available march 8th 2021 yeah. international women's day Woo oh hey, Yay, great women. timing great timing I, yeah. Yeah. Excellent. See, and that's then, one of the things that my publisher did. Like that's to to your point earlier. Mm -hmm. Smart. You know those publishers. They work hard. They work hard they to promote they us. Did. Yeah. Did you have to get an agent, or did you find them on your own? They found me. This agent. Oh, sorry. This publisher found me. But now I'm working on my next book, and I'm working on the book proposal for an agent. So we'll see where that goes. Excellent. Excellent. Well, thank you everybody for joining us. This has been a wonderful Connecting with Jennifer Filzen episode. And please go look her up and we'll see you guys on the next one. Thank Bye. you for having me.